Okay, so today I want to talk about three tools commonly used in the northern forest. So there's three tools, the bill hook, the axe, and the saw. So there's many different types of bill hooks, but this one is a Rinaldi, uh, a bit lighter and uh, longer and thinner than many other types, but it's great for dealing with small brush and uh, cutting small branches. You can also use the point for dragging uh, some of the larger pieces of wood, but I wouldn't uh, do this too much or apply too much heavy weight to it. The bill hook is not very good for chopping large pieces of wood. The hook gets in the way and it doesn't have enough weight. Personally, I like bow saws for their cheap replacement blades, although they do have some problems. I find with saws, when you're cutting stuff like willow, if it's not anchored down right, the bottom uh, bark will hold on and pinch your saw, so it can sometimes be a bit fiddly and a bit uh, inefficient. Compared with an axe, an axe doesn't uh, really have the problem because you just chopping your way through. An axe can stick too but it's not like a saw where once it sticks it's really hard to unbind. I found in smaller wood like four inches an axe is a far more efficient tool than green wood. An axe is a really really efficient tool at breaking up like three inch limbs into small pieces of firewood. As you can see by putting it on a stable chopping block or lying it across a log you can cut up smaller limbs really easily and uh, the type of wood that uh, you don't really need to split. Cutting this stuff up with a saw is really fiddly because it's very light and moves around a lot and uh, you've got to have some way of anchoring it down So an axe is an ideal tool for breaking up these uh, limbs. As you can see I'm very fast and efficient. You can gather a lot of firewood that way. A lot of the firewood you'd probably just put in the brush pile because it was too much of a pain to cut up with a chainsaw. The best axes for doing this work are always like very, very thin profiled, such as your limbing axes. You also want a wider blade um, than some of like the Swedish types because this, the Swedish types, because they're so narrow, it's very hard to hit accurately. And often you'll um, only sever half the log rather than sever it with one clean blow. If we compare that to using the saw, I've seen a technique in some bushcraft books where you hold the bow saw between your legs and like pin it between the ground and your chest. I found this to be very awkward and I'm not a fan of this technique. Um, it works, but it's nowhere near as efficient as the axe. Again, the problem with the bark on the backside just holding on and then it pinches the saw. Could be quite frustrating. One of the big problems of these bow saws is how pointed each end is. So this end you tighten it and also the end where it clamps on. Both of those dig into you, so I don't like that technique because it puts that point into your chest. There are ways to try and pin the wood between your legs and make it more stable to cut, which works okay, but 
it's very limited. You can't cut down to a very small length because you need enough length to, in order to pin it properly. It is quite awkward too. It's, it's still be a little bit better. I prefer doing it this way, but uh, it's not great. You're much better off dealing with that kind of wood with an axe or bill hook. One of the things you have to be careful of when sawing is the blade can bounce out, especially with these bow saws, and uh, ride across the back of your hand. So you want to have your hand far enough away from the blade, or some people prefer to stick their hand through the bow saw frame, that way it can never come back onto the back of your hand and cut you. But you can see the problem is it's very very um, rare you actually have a set up out in the woods where you've got a, a good place to hold it down so you can cut it efficiently. It's always very awkward and um, a bit frustrating with that bark holding on the back. Not a problem with dry wood, it's more the green stuff, often like willow. Another problem is when you fall a tree, it will often lie directly on the ground. So sawing on the ground is a bit more awkward than sawing up higher and uh, it puts your blade in danger of going into the ground and blunting. <clears throat> the saw is a more efficient tool for bucking up into stove wood because it doesn't produce any chip. So you're losing less wood. Those chips can still be gathered up and burned as kindling, but, um, you know, it's uh, if you're cutting a lot of wood, the, the saw does produce less waste. The ideal situation for sawing is really to have a suspended log so there's space underneath and it's at a comfortable height and it's fairly well clamped. I mean this fallen tree still has a bit of movement in it but it's a lot better than uh, trying to pin it down yourself. One thing with sawing is you put your left hand on top of the frame to ho hold it steady and stop it wobbling around and you try and run the saw as flat as possible. Any little rocking really decreases the efficiency of the sawing. It's something I learned during competition using single buck saws is uh, you can put in five strokes rocking the saw and two strokes keeping it dead flat and the two strokes keeping it dead flat will cut far more timber. So often you're better going slower, more consistent pace and more precise with keeping the saw flat than trying to saw as fast as possible and it's rocking all over the place. In this clip I'm deliberately rocking the saw and allowing the frame to twist slightly to be as inefficient. I know it's quite extreme but you can see by the time it takes me to make this cut it's a significant portion longer. Cutting deadwood is where saws really excel versus the axe. You can see how fast this piece of dry dead willow cuts with a saw. As you can see it's absolutely bone dry. It's been suspended in the tree and in the sun. It's not been lying on the ground. Cutting deadwood is where axes really fall flat. This is a thin axe, but still it fails to cut into the fibres. Dry wood doesn't chip easily either. Because this piece of wood is so dry, it's also very light, which allows it to move around a lot. Meaning the transfer of power from the axe into the wood is very low. If you're cutting a lot of dry wood, you really want to saw. It's not so bad in a bushcraft scenario where you're bucking up the logs into very long sections to burn immediately. You might only have to make three cuts on the tree. But if you're trying to make stove wood out of dry dead wood, then you're far better off using a saw.
You'd be very frustrated trying to chop it with an axe. As you can see, that's a thin profile and it still doesn't bite in. Back onto some green willow. The axe cuts well. You want to use a cutting pattern, cutting all the fibers on one side before switching to the other. It's only when I get to the middle of the log and the top's done that I switch to a one-on-one -on -one pattern where I hit each side. As you can see, these large chips are very clean and you could burn them as kindling, no problem. Here I'm using the bill hook to uh, remove the small branches off a main stem. The bill hook is very handy for this work because you can keep one hand free to drag brush out of your way, and the other hand can bend the branch downwards so that it applies tension that makes it easier to cut. The bill hook can also be used to pull material towards you so you don't have to bend over. You can cut some of the bigger stems but it, it starts to struggle. This is a very light bill hook. I do have another one of a similar style but with much more weight behind it which cuts the bigger stuff better. This particular bill hook would be better suited to lighter branches and uh, herbaceous plants. But it is a very handy tool. All these little annoying branches are very hard to cut with a saw or axe. The axe handles it a lot better than the saw though. We've got a lot of small brush to clear. Bill hook is your best friend. I do like machetes too, but I find that machetes often uh, don't trap the, the wood and it can sometimes bend out the way and not be cut. Once you get into slightly bigger wood, the axe is king. With just the saw. I hear that the saw is the most efficient tool and that uh, there's no value in learning how to use an actual bill hook. I think it's very untrue that the saw is the best tool in all cases. The context matters. As you can see I can clear the stem and cut off all the small branches and uh, cut it up into sections as I was just previously doing with the axe and billhook. However, it is a lot more awkward and uh, these conditions are quite ideal. This is the end of the day where I only had this one stem to clear. Normally there are more stems around and the, the saw can easily catch on other stems and small branches and twigs that pull into the blade and it stops you from uh, operating the saw properly. All the small annoying little branches also cause problems with the saw and of course the bark sometimes not cutting and pinching just slows you down. Of course you can get the job done but uh, if you have the option to bring more than one tool having a bill hook and a saw is uh, 
a very good idea. The axe is the best to do everything. But uh, when you have all three tools, it's easy work. All three tools exist for a reason. There's no better than another. It's all about context and how much work and what type of work you're doing. There's value in having all of them and learning how to use them.